What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, we are gonna be solving hard SQL technical interview questions. These hard interview questions are something that you would get in kind of a medium or a senior level data analyst position. The easy and the medium are more towards the entry level or slash mid level somewhere in that range. The hard ones are not something that you're going to get in the kind of more entry level range. These are questions that you might see in kind of a more advanced SQL technical interview. I've been on the interview side where I've interviewed for a ton of data analyst positions. I was also a hiring manager. And then even before that, I was on a hiring team where we conducted a ton of SQL technical interviews. And so the questions that we're gonna look at today are very, very similar to ones that I have seen in the real world or even given myself to interviewees. With that being said, let's jump on my screen and take a look. All right, so we're here on analystbuilder.com. We're gonna go over here to the questions tab. We're gonna to filter to the free ones and then we'll go to the hard ones. Now, there are a lot more hard ones here on Analyst Builder, but under the free tab, uh, we only have three. Looks like I didn't uh, get this one right, but we have that one today. Well, so we'll see if I get this one right today. You can go try out these questions completely for free, and we're gonna be taking a look at temperature fluctuations and Kelly's third purchase. And then there's another one called Cake vs. Pie, which I think may be the hardest of these three. So you might wanna go ahead and try to take that one and see if you can get it. Now this is Kelly's third purchase. We'll start with that one and then we'll do temperature fluctuations. Uh, we'll see how quickly I can do these two because these are hard, but I think we can do it. So let's look at Kelly's third purchase. It says, at Kelly's ice cream shop, Kelly gives a 33% discount on each customer's third purchase. Write a query to select the third transaction for each customer that received that discount. Output the customer ID, transaction ID, amount, and the amount after the discount as discounted amount. Order the output on customer ID in ascending order. Note transaction IDs occur sequentially. The lowest transaction ID is the earliest ID. Now that's really important. We'll have to remember that. Now before we jump in anything, let's, um, let's go look at the data, but then let's start making some notes. So we have a customer ID, we have the transaction ID and the amount that they spent. Now this is the amount that eventually we'll need to use to calculate the end uh, uh, amount that they paid with the discount. So they get 33% off whatever this number is on their third purchase, if, that, if you're tracking that. So what we need to do, and let's start making some notes. One, we're gonna need to apply a discount. So that's gonna be 33%. We have to identify though, the person's third purchase. So when they come in three times on that third purchase, they then get to get that discount. So how can we do that? Well, I, I'm almost certain, just looking at this data, because we have 1,001 for a customer ID, 1,001, 1,001, what we can do is we need to order this transaction ID and then give it some type of rank. Now, because each transaction ID should be unique, and we'll double check that, but it should be unique, we should just be able to use row number, but we could also use rank or dense rank, um, but they should get the exact out, same output for each of them. It shouldn't matter. So I think using just row number um, and then filtering when it equals three. So we're gonna apply a row number based off the customer ID and the transaction ID. And then for each customer, we'll give it a row number and then when it's three, which is the third transaction, that's the one we give the discount to. Um, in our output, let's look at what our output is gonna be. Our output is going to be, let's take a look. Select the third transaction, output customer ID, transaction ID, amount. So all columns, all columns with, uh, and I'll just copy this, discounted amount. So really everything with just that new column. And then we need to order by the customer underscore ID. So we got a lot to do. Uh, this, this definitely doesn't look like, of course this is a difficult question, it's a hard one, but it doesn't look like a super straightforward one. So the first thing that we need to do is we have to identify this row number because we cannot apply the discount until we know which data to apply it to. The output in the order by will come at the very end. So let's look at this. Let's do um, let's do a comma here. We'll come down here. Let's do row number. Now this is a window function. It's 
it, you know, if you haven't used these before, you haven't taken like my full course and, and you know, work through these things, row number uh, is a window function that's gonna apply to a window or kind of like a group by is, is what I compare it to. When you group by, all of those customer IDs with 1001 are gonna be grouped into one row. With uh, a window function, they aren't gonna be grouped into one row, they'll just be in a window where you'll see each row individually and you can apply something to each row instead of grouping it and aggregating the data. So it's really unique um, and really useful. So we're gonna do row number and what we need to do this is over the transaction ID and we need to order by, order by transaction ID, and that's gonna be ascending. So the earliest one, it says lowest transaction ID is the earliest. So we need to start with the earliest, then go to the highest and pick the third one. So let's just run this. And I need to do this over. I said row number, I didn't write that right at all. So we'll do over and then we write it. So we're doing, we're applying this row number the over is the keyword that we use to specify that this is what we are doing it on. And so now we have this and we can't just do this because it's applying the row number appropriately based off of only the transaction IDs from, from lowest to highest. Here's the thing though, we have to do it per each customer. So it's each customer's third. So we have to use partition by before the order by. Now partition by is going to separate it out by the customer ID. It's kind of, that's kind of like the grouping part. Um, and so we'll use partition by customer ID. And why did I copy that? By customer ID. And now let's run this. And now when we come down, it should say 1001, 1001. And notice that we have this um, row number applying at the customer ID level. And then when it gets to the last customer ID and it goes to the next one, it restarts. So now this is that third person's transaction, 1001. And then in 1002, this is the third transaction. Now here's the tricky part about trying to then use this row number, is I cannot come down here and say where, and let's label this, we'll say as row underscore num. Let's run that, uh, whoops because I have this as blank. Let's comment that out real quick. So I have this row num, but I cannot say where row num is equal to three. Let's try it. So it's gonna say unknown column. It doesn't understand that that's a column. And you may be thinking, well, you know, in aggregations with group by, you can use the having statement. Well, let's try the having and let's run this. It says the window function is allowed only in the select list and order by clause. We cannot use in the having. So what we need to do is we need to actually make this as uh, its own little output is what I'll say. Now we can do that in two different ways. We can use a CTE and we can use common table expression to kind of store this data down here, how it is, and then we can query off it later, or we can put it in a subquery. Or if you know we wanted to get really advanced and we're using, um, uh, actual MySQL database, we could use something like a temporary table or a view or something. We could do other things, but for here, let's wrap all of this in a, um, let me come right here. Let's wrap all this in a subquery. And when you have uh, a subquery in a from statement, you have to label it. So you have to give it a name. So we're just gonna call as row numbers and let's select everything. And what this is doing is we're selecting everything from this data right down here, this table that we've essentially created. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select everything. Now, what we need to do is we need to say where row underscore num is equal to three. And let's run this. So now we have each person's row num three. This is the third person's transaction. Now this is really good. So what we need to do next is we need to then calculate this amount. So it gets a 33% discount now. So let's select the columns that we actually want in our output. We need customer underscore ID. We need transaction underscore ID. We need the amount. Now we need to calculate the discounted amount. Remember we have to label this last one um, we'll say as 
discounted amount. So this next column is gonna be this calculation. Now we have to give a 33% discount. So we can't say amount times, let me bring this down like this. We cannot say amount times 0 0.33. Let's run this and let me see. I just spelled transaction ID wrong, transaction ID. That's, it always gets me. Um, this is actually a, this is 33% of this number. That's what this is. Now, 33% of this number is not a 33% discount. We're giving them a 67% discount. What we want is 67% of the amount. Let's run this. This right here is 33% off the total amount. It's a discount. So instead of paying $94, this person only had to pay 62.98. Now the last thing we need to do, the very last thing is order by customer ID. And it looks like it already is, but I'm gonna do it anyways. We'll do order by customer ID ascending. And let's run this. This should be our final output. And you know, it took a little bit of work to get there. We had to use this subquery, but I'm pretty sure this is right. Let's go ahead and check this answer. And there we go, our solution is correct. Now remember, there's other ways to write this. There isn't just one way. Um, this is kind of the difficult part about hard interviews or like senior level data analyst interviews for, for SQL um, technical interviews. The difficult thing is there's not only one way to answer it. And so it starts getting down to, okay, what's the best way to solve it? Walk through your thought process. So everything that I just did where I walked through and I said, okay, I could use any of these, but row number makes the most sense for this data. Understanding the difference between those and why I'm choosing one over the other um, is really helpful for the interviewer to understand and gauge kind of your skill level. That's why I recommend you write it out well, but also talk about it. The thought process is kind of the most important part. Now, if you tried this question, you could not get it or you couldn't solve it, you can always get a hint. Um, you can take a look at the expected output or you can go up to the video explanation where I walk through this entire question or just go look at the solution. And let's see if I wrote it the same way. Well, I called it RN for row number, but this is essentially the same, although I wrote out the column names. It's essentially the same, but you could have done a CTE uh, with this as well. But that is how you would solve this Kelly's third purchase. I will leave a link in the description if you wanna try that one out. Now let's go up here. Let's go to temperature fluctuations. So this question says, write a query to find all dates with higher temperatures compared to the previous dates, yesterday. Order dates in ascending order. Okay, let's look at the data. So we have our date over here and the temperature. So it looks like, for example, this one. This is the 2nd of January. This temperature was 70. The previous days was 65. So we want to identify this date. And I think it's just the date. Um, to find all the dates with higher temperatures. It looks like our output is just gonna be the dates. Um, and I'll write that real quick. Um, output, just date column. Now, how are we gonna do this? How are we gonna compare this? Uh, initially, there are two things that I think we could do. One, we could use a window function. We could use a lag, uh, a, a lag function on this, which would look at the previous rows data. So if we ordered on the date, which it already looks like it's ordered, we can use the lag function to look at the previous value. So here is 70, then we use the lag function and it would pull over 65 over here. That would be a perfectly fine uh, way to do it. The other way we could do it is we could do a self join. So we could tie the table to itself, but instead of doing it where the date is equal to the date, we say the date minus one. That's another way that we could solve this. So you can go ahead and try whichever way you would like to. I think I prefer the self join. Um, I just think the last one we did uh, a row number, which is a window function. So I don't wanna do another window function, right? Although you could solve this with a window function. Um, I'm gonna try a self join. So let's pull this over. Um, I think I'm gonna do a self join, but on the previous day where there's a one day difference. So where the day is one day off is what I'll say. Um, then we can use that to compare. So use the temperatures to say where one is higher than the other. 
And that should make more sense uh, in just a second when we start writing it out. But now we also need to order by dates ascending. That's it. So we have our data down here. And in order to do a self join, we're just gonna say, um, I'm gonna say inner join, but we can do, if there's a different type of join you wanna do, you can also do that. But I'm gonna say on temperatures, and we need to label these differently. So we'll do T1 for temperatures one, and then T2. So now it's like we have this table over here, which is temperatures. We have this table over here, this temperatures, and we're gonna join them together. Well, now, what are we gonna, oh, let's do T2. Now, what are we joining these together on? Um, we're gonna be joining this on the dates. Now, there's a few different ways that we can write this, but there is a function called date diff where we can take one date and compare it to a different date and make sure it's one day different. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Let's do um, a join on and we'll do date diff and then we'll do t1.date and it's auto populating it for us, but date diff comma t2 dot, and then we'll say date right there. And it should be a one day difference. Let's try this. Let's run this. And the reason why it's not pulling up is because we have all the same uh, column names. Now, when it has the same column name, it's just showing up as just one. One is overlaying the other. So what we're gonna do is t1.date, comma, t1 dot temperature, and let's get rid of that. Then we're gonna label these other ones different. So we'll do t2 dot date as date two, and then we'll copy this, and we'll do t2 dot temperature as temperature two. Now let's run this, and let's see what happens. So we have, uh, this date compared to the previous date, this date compared to the previous date, so three versus two, and let's keep going, four to three, five to four, six to five, and so every single date has the previous date. Now what we can do is we can compare this temperature to this temperature. Now we can do that in a where statement, or we could just do it in the join. We can make it a conditional, uh, part of the condition in the join. Maybe I'll write out both, but let's say and we'll do t1 dot, uh, t1 dot temperature is greater than t2 dot temperature. So let's run this. So now we have 70 compared to 65, and it looks like the other one wasn't as high, so the third day is gone. 58 compared to 55, 90 compared to 58, 82 compared to 70, 88 compared to 82. So these are all of our dates right here in this column that this temperature was higher than the previous day's temperature. And so what we should be able to do is just get rid of all of these columns and just take the date. And let's run this. And there we go. And all we have to do now is order by, and I think it's already correct, but I'm just gonna, I always like to write it out if it's asking us to do it. Take, do this in ascending. And so let's run this. Yeah, in ascending order. I didn't write that. Oh yeah, here I did. I wrote it right here. So now this looks correct to me. Let's go ahead and check our answer. And there we go. Our solution is correct. Now again, there's multiple different ways to solve this. Genuinely, off the top of my head, I could think of two, probably another one, another third option. Um, just off the top of my head, because I've been using MySQL for a while. Walking through that, in your interview saying, I think I could do it in this way or this way, but here's why I'm choosing this way. That really tells an interviewer, this guy knows what he's talking about, or a girl. This person knows what they're talking about. They understand it, they get it. I can trust that this person will know how to do the work that we're gonna give them if we hire them. You wanna give them a lot of confidence. That's all I'm gonna say. Now, if you don't know how to do this or you've never done something like this before, that's what this platform is for. Um, so that when you get into those interviews or you know you want to learn and go take a course, when you get into those interviews, you can confidently say, I know this skill. Uh, and so if you had trouble with that one, you can always go to hints. You can always go to the expected output, video solution, solution. Um, let's see how I solved it here. Oh, I solved it the exact same. But I could, have, I could have solved it a different way. I think the lag function would have done just as well. Uh, it may have been simpler actually. 
So this is the one that I used, but honestly, the lag function in a window function may even be better. So we solved this Kelly's third purchase. We solved this temperature fluctuations. I will leave links in the description for both of those. Go ahead and try those out yourself. And again, even back in the question section, there's this cake versus pie, uh, which is probably the most difficult of the hard ones uh, under the free tier. Now, if you go back under the, you know, there's a, uh, where you can pay for a subscription, under those there's like 20 hard questions and they're all very unique, very different, focusing on data cleaning, window functions, uh, different types of joins, and they're all really unique uh, and fun to do. But this cake versus pie one is really interesting. I want, um, I want you guys to go try this one. I'll leave this one in the description as well. This is really an interesting, difficult question. So those were our two hard SQL interview questions. Uh, they were pretty challenging, you know, window function and then self-join, two things that are a little bit more complex than you'll see in easy and medium questions. Uh, in the next lesson, we'll be solving a very hard question. So if you have not, check out analystbuilder.com. It's one of the best platform for data analysts. I created all the content on there, all the courses, all the questions, and we have so much more coming to the platform. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe below, and I will see you in the next video.